Hi, George Williams, CEO of Reliability X, and today we're going to walk through a combination uh, of a bathtub curve and a PF curve. So this is kind of a new graphic for us. We are uh, testing it out and hoping you'll provide us a little feedback so we can make it even better. All right, so based on Nolan and Heap's study and all the variety of um, failure mechanisms and failure curves associated with components, we end up with what's called the bathtub curve. So if you're unfamiliar with the bathtub curve, it is this line right here that I am gonna desperately try to draw relatively well, which I didn't do such a great job or a bad job. All right, so anyway, it's broken up into a couple of sections when you combine all the various failure uh, mechanisms. We have initially what's called infant mortality here in the blue. Infant mortality are things like electrical components. That's why they're bench top tested before they ever ship them out. Sometimes they're bricks, sometimes they're not. So this failure mode of infant mortality are things like warranty items, things that are made on the Monday after Super Bowl, et cetera. And so we've got this, we didn't survive too far after initial installation. If things survive that pattern, they go through what's called a typical useful life which is comprised up of random events. We're gonna get back to that in just a second. Further downstream, we've got wear out. Now, typically wear out is age related, meaning the asset has survived its entire useful life and it's just no longer capable of performing its functions as designed and so it has phased out or worn out. Uh, many cases, uh, things like lamps, light fixtures, the lamp itself, um, oftentimes either are infant mortality or they end up in, in wear out phase. Um, and otherwise, this thing's a unicorn. Our mechanical equipment that rotates doesn't typically end up there. If it does, it's usually because it was built in 1942 and just will survive forever. Now that brings us back to, and let's kind of get rid of all the clutter here our random event section. And in our random event section, this is where a speck of dust gets in our bearing and eventually takes the bearing out. This is where um, misalignment begins to create issues on a piece of equipment and ultimately leads to a seal failure. We've got all these random events that take place. And so if we look at a population over time, it'll plot like one of them survived to here, one of them survived to here, one of them survived to here. And so this is random in nature. The reason we have preventive maintenance strategies and utilize predictive technologies is to A, extend how far out in this timeline we can survive, and B, try to know in as early advance warning as possible when that event will occur. So let's take a deeper look at this. So if we zoom in, We've got the intended function of the asset and its base condition. The reason we have preventive maintenance is to restore things back to their base condition. And so our lubricant begins to deteriorate. Our lubricant begins to deteriorate. We lubricate and restore to base condition. Same thing. And eventually we inspect the belts, realize they need to be replaced. We replace the belts and align and we restore back to base condition. So we continue this cycle over and over again throughout the life of the asset. Eventually, eventually some event occurs. Somebody doesn't clean off the tip of their grease gun. Some event occurs and a speck of contamination gets inside our bearing. We've done all the right things from a preventive maintenance strategy perspective, but now we've got this issue that is going to lead to this bearing's ultimate demise prior to its expected L10 life. Now, there are a variety of technologies utilized to help predict these events far in advance. There are things like artificial intelligence and machine learning. These can pick up things based on a variety of parameters. Um, then ultimately ultrasound can hear that there is contamination inside the bearing. Vibration analysis can pick up that there's something going on on a cage pass frequency or an outer race defect. 
if we have oil sampling and oil analysis um, based on different types of issues, we'll find the contamination inside our lubricants. Uh, ultimately, potentially infrared can pick up that we now have a, a heat signature or a delta T that shouldn't exist. And then finally, we start to hear it and we can feel that it's hot and it is just, you know, <laughs> I can smell it, it's burning. We have our senses that can pick things up. Why do we utilize all of these different mechanisms to figure things out? Well, it's really just so we can minimize the impact to our operation. So if we look at how this curve lands further downstream, we can see that ultimately we have some catastrophic event. And in this catastrophic event down here, we have now fouled. And in some cases, we have blown apart the bearing and dropped the shaft on the pillow block and then made a nice oval <laughs> in our pillow block and scored the shaft. So, and maybe even bent fins in a fan or something, uh, other, other damage that is catastrophic. And so what happens is now, instead of just replacing the bearing, I am you know, having a shaft turned, I'm having all kinds of other things take place that increase my cost not only on the maintenance side, but now the downtime of the asset or the downtime to operations is much more significant if we're say in a packaging machine or a conveyor or something that feeds product. So the reason we utilize these technologies is to create a window of opportunity to properly plan, schedule, and gain access to an asset before the catastrophic, catastrophic event. If we wait until senses are picking things up, we are inside this small time window. This means we are rushing in parts. If your planner is constantly rush ordering parts and things like that, you're living in this space and, prop and not necessarily utilizing predictive technologies to its fullest extent. If we are utilizing these predictive technologies, we get this much longer time window to the catastrophic event. This allows us to properly plan and schedule. If we can properly plan and schedule the work and gain access to the asset, Without the additional catastrophic damage, we have not only lowered the maintenance cost long term for this asset, we have also minimized the impact to the operation, which is our responsibility as well. We have to make sure that the operation can continue to run and the asset can continue to function. So um, this is just a sample of what we're looking to begin to create and develop. And so what we're hoping is that you provide a little feedback on this video. Uh, let us know what we could even make better uh, in the graphic itself or in the delivery, because I just made this crap up. Um, and so um, that's our, our bathtub curve with our PF curve embedded, uh, explaining why we maintain back to base condition and why we utilize predictive technologies. Hopefully you found this uh, helpful. Leave a comment.